In this video we will see how we are going to program the data structure linked list. So the first thing we must see is how we are going to program the structure of a node. So I am going to create a class for the structure of node. So let's recall what a node contains. The first thing a node contains is the data which we want to add to a list. This data can be of any data type but I am going to keep it as integer for this example. The next thing a node contains is an address. Now we must see what does this address point to. This address is of yet another node. So how are we going to represent this in our program? We can represent this by creating a node object. When I create an object of node type, say the name is next, whenever I reference it with respect to its name, it means I am talking about the address of that object. In other words, when I just take the name of an object, that means I am talking about the address of the object. When I am not saying object dot any of its data elements or if I'm not calling a function of that object this means and I'm I'm talking about the address so let's say I have created this object node next let's say I were to print out just the value of next so I'm going to write a statement like system.out.println and in the bracket I'm just going to give next not any of the data members not any of the functions just the name of the object I'm going to print. In this case, we are going to, it will print the address of the object. So let me repeat that. Since we need to contain the address of an object of node in this class, we are going to create an object of node type. And whenever we need to reference the address of the object, we are going to use the name of the object because that is what the name of the object is going to signify. So once again, I need the address of a node. So how am I going to get the address of a node? I will create an object of node type. Whenever I need the address of the node, I am going to use the name of the object. That's why we are going to have node next. This next is going to represent the address of the next node in that linked list. Now, similarly, I will want to keep the address of the previous node in the linked list as well. So in the same way, I'm going to create an object of type node. Type node and call it PREV standing for previous. So as you can see, we have a class in which we are creating objects of the same class. This is known as a self-referential class or in other words, the node is a self-referential object. Why? Because in the class we have data members which are objects of the same class. That's why it's called a self-referential class. So we have the data, we have the address of the next node, we have the address of the previous node. So now let's start initializing the node. So I'm going to write the constructor. Now the parameter I would like to accept in the constructor would be what data would you like to store in the node. So when you are creating a node or when the user is creating a node, the user should give what data would you like to store in that node. 
I am going to take the data as some variable x. So the first thing I will do is I will initialize the data. As of now, we don't know where this node is going to be stored in the linked list. We don't know what comes next and we don't know what comes previous to it. So as of now, when the node has just been created, I am going to keep the next and previous pointing to null. So next is equal to null. Previous is equal to null. With this, I have initialized my node. Essentially, that is all we need in a node class. You could have a few functions here and there to display the data or to display the data of the next node. But these are the main points you will need to remember when you are creating class node. So with this, we come to the end of class node. Let's go on to see what our linked list class is going to look like. So I'm going to name it class LL or class linked list. So if I have a linked list, what do I need to store in that linked list? So if you remember what we said before, we said that if we have the beginning node of the list, we can somehow by traversing the list, we can attain all the other nodes present in that list. So it is important only to have the first node of the linked list because using the first node, we can get all other nodes. So essentially a linked list has to only keep track of the starting node. Or the very first node. Once we keep track of that, we can keep track of the rest using, you know, the successive addresses which the nodes store. So the only thing we need to really keep track in a linked list is going to be the starting node. So I have created an object of type node which is going to be called start. Now for any linked list it is also advisable to keep track of the last node or let's say node end. Now node end is not compulsory to have in the linked list just like node previous was not compulsory to have in the class node. but it will make a lot of the addition and deletion operations much easier. So we are going to keep track of the first node of the linked list. This is the essential in our class because using the first node, we can attain all other nodes of the linked list. We are also going to keep track of the last node called node end. This is just because it will make a lot of our programming in the additions and deletions a lot easier. So now we have the two data members of our linked list. Let us go about initializing it. I'm not going to have any const uh, parameter to the constructor here. When I create the linked list, I am going to assume the linked list is going to be completely empty. So there is no start and there is no end. So I'm going to assign start to null. And I'm going to assign end to null. With that, we have finished the initialization of the linked list. Now, what are the different functions that we can have in our linked list? So, the rest of the program will come here, which we will discuss later on. But let's just see what are the functions we would like to write in our linked list. So the first one is going to be the print function because printing is not going to be as easy in a linked list because we need to go from one node, get the address of the next, go to that node, print the value, 
go to the address of the next and so on. So it's going to be slightly different from how you will print an array because the data is not going to be stored in contiguous locations. So we cannot really use a for loop from, you know, from zero to the end of the linked list. We need to have a slightly different method. So printing is definitely one of the functions which we will need to look at. The next two major functions is going to be additions and of course deletions. Now additions and deletions can happen in three ways. Addition can happen from the front or let's say the beginning. Additions can happen from the end and in a linked list, additions can also occur from the middle of the list. Similarly, deletion can happen from the front, it can happen at the end, and it can happen in the middle. So these are the functions we will need to look at when we are writing our class linked list. So let's take a look at that in the future videos.